This is a tutorial for Windows users that would like to run a virtual machine and run Linux. And I have very little experience with Linux, but I got all this working, so I thought it might be worth both for me to remember and to help other users. First thing to do is get the virtual machine, and if you already have one, that's fine. I didn't, so I decided to use Oracle's VirtualBox. So I went to virtualbox.org, Downloads tab, and then I'm on Windows, so I just picked this link right here. And then I saved that off to my disk. And then you'll need one other thing. You'll need a distribution of Linux, and I decided to use Kubuntu. So I went to the kubuntu.org site, went to the download, and I downloaded this 32-bit version of Kubuntu. And then you just need to remember where you store this on your hard disk because you're going to need it during the installation process. Let me minimize this, and let me bring up the VirtualBox software. So here we go. You can see I've already got uh, virtual machines installed, two Kubuntus, and one Win7 32-bit, and I'm on Win7 64-bit but I wanted to install a 32-bit version of Kubuntu. So to get started, you click New. You give it a name. We'll just call this Kubuntu Demo. Uh, type Linux version Ubuntu is fine. And we'll click Next. And then it's asking us how much RAM we're going to dedicate to this virtual machine. And I've got 32 gig installed, so I'm going to make this 2 gig. Hit Next and uh, create a virtual hard drive now. Uh, you need a virtual hard drive to run your virtual machine, and you typically don't want to use an existing one. So I'll create a brand new one. And VDI is the virtual box format for this. So you can see this is the one used by Par Parallels, and there's other ones used by VMware. And I find it simplest to just go with the native format. Click Next, and then make it dynamically allocated. It's only going to use the amount I specify up to what it actually needs, as opposed to just taking up a big chunk of my hard disk. So I'll click Next. And then I'm basically telling it here how big I want to allow it to get. So I'm going to leave it at 8 gig and say create. And really hasn't done very much yet. If you click on this, right click and go to settings. Everything the wizard did is in one of these tabs on the left and then one of the tabs here. To start with, I want to go to storage. And I want to go to the ATA controller. Because I have a solid state drive and you might as well, you can click solid state drive here and it'll do some optimization for your solid state drive. One more thing, on the controller IDE, uh, it's empty right now, and when we boot, we, we're going to want it to find that ISO image. So wherever you put that ISO image, you can come here, and you can, you can select choose a virtual CD slash DVD disk file, and go select that ISO image. Now, I've already done it once, so it's in my pop-up list. So you can see here's the Kubuntu 13.10 desktop i386 ISO. I'm just going to select that. And then we'll take a look at this. I think it's under system. Yeah, so here's the boot order and take off floppy. So the first thing it's going to see is the CD, and it's going to see that ISO image. So it's going to auto run that for us. So let me just click OK. And then let's just go ahead and click Start. And it's starting up on the other window. Let me drag it over. Um, so by default, it's capturing my mouse and my keyboards when I'm inside the window. And if yours doesn't, the first time you click, it'll give you some information about doing that. So I'm just going to click on Install Kubuntu. And you can see we get a couple of options. So I'm going to install the third-party software and download the updates while installing. And then down here off the bottom, I'll make this a little wider too. Can't make it any taller. This is sort of the optimized screen size for YouTube. So I'll click Continue. And it's going to show me some information and let me answer some questions while it's installing. But first, we need to click Install Now. So you can see at the bottom some of the things it's doing. It's asking me for my time zone, and it guessed correctly. So I'm going to say Continue. And I'm going to scroll up so you can read. It's just looking for what keyboard layout I want. And again, it's guessing correctly. It's asking me to choose a password. I'm going to pick one, and we're just going to call this. And I'm just going to say Log In Automatically, and say Continue. All right. Didn't scroll up far enough. You also need to enter a username. So we'll just make this my name. That's enough. Okay, so again, we're just waiting for it to retrieve and install files. Okay, so it's finished, and we'll click Restart now. And VirtualBox Manager crashed. Okay, so I'm going to close the virtual machine and the VirtualBox Manager. I'm going to restart it. And it looked like it finished and it was ready to restart, so I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go to Settings. And I'm going to go to System, and I'm going to just change the order. I'm going to move the hard disk to boot. So if it is done now, when I hit Start, it should just boot. And it's again on the other window. There we go. 
And it looks like it's going to work. Ubuntu is booting from the hard disk. It moved it to the other window again. There we go. And there's the splash screen. Let me scroll down. And there we go. We booted and we're in Kubuntu. The crash didn't cost us anything. We didn't have to redo anything just by telling it to boot from the hard disk. We're good to go. All right, so I am going to close down this virtual machine right now, and I'll do it politely. Come down here, and I'll hover over Leave, and I'll just say Shut Down, and then click off Turn Off the Computer, and that should take us back to the VirtualBox Manager in a second. But now we can come over and we can click on Snapshots, and Snapshots are if you're sort of used to restore points or like restore points. So now I can click Snapshot, and I just call this the initial state. So if I ever want to start over from a clean install of Kubuntu, I can always come back to here and then click Restore. And But I'm going to start from the current state now and go to step two. So I'm starting the machine up again. This time it started on the same window. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to do all run all the updates. So I can do that under Applications, under System, and scroll down to Update Manager and just click that. And we'll do it the GUI way. Grab the title bar up here at the top. And it's out checking for updates. And it's going to find quite a few, even though we just downloaded this version of Kubuntu. OK, so all this software is available. So I'm just going to say Install Updates and mark additional changes, changes to other packages. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to type the password I gave it in one of those early steps. And what this is doing, I believe, is is temporarily promoting me to root. So even though it didn't explicitly ask for a root password, that password that I gave it when I'm running as my username is also the password for root. And we're all done. So now I can click quit. And again, I'm going to want to save a snapshot at this point. So now we have a basic Kubuntu install with the current updates. And then I think it's time to install Guest Editions. Now, Guest Editions is a Oracle virtual box tool. Makes your host system play nicer with the guest operating system. So let's go ahead and just start up our Kubuntu install. I went down the wrong path when I first did this because I came and I followed the directions starting here with insert Guest Editions CD image. But at least in Kubuntu, and I don't know about other distros, you need to install another piece of software first. So let's go ahead and scroll down and make this window maximized here. Here. And I'm just going to type terminal up here in the window. And there's the console. Scroll back up. We're going to use the sudo keyword, which is, as far as I know, an old Unix joke. I used to think of it as super user do and as a, a homophonic pun on pseudonym. We're going to be a pseudonym of the, of the root, which is a super user. So we just now give it the command, which is app get, which is a package manager for Debian. And we're going to say install and DKMS, which I think is the dynamic kernel management system. Just hit return on that. And then it's going to want your root password or your user password. And it's asking, telling us how much space it's going to take. Hit Y, get rid of that character. And then it's going to go ahead and install all that for us. Now it's finished. And you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to close everything out. I'm going to create another snapshot. I'm just going to call this DKMS. And I'm going to start it up again. Now I'm going to come up to Devices, and I'm going to say Insert the Guest Edition CD image. I believe because the ISO image for Kubuntu is still in the virtual drive, I can just say Force Unmount here. Let's just go take a look here. And, okay, so now it looks like it automatically did it by forcing that unmount. It unmounted the Kubuntu image here, this ISO, and it put in the VBox Editions ISO. And we'll just go down to the K menu here, and we'll go to the File Manager. And you can see down here under Devices is VBox Editions. And then this little Dolphin file manager system has a shortcut of F4. Opens a, uh, opens a terminal for us right there and CDs us into the current directory. And so you can see here's VBox Linux Editions dot run. So what we're going to do is sudo again. And if you're not a 
Unix user at all, dot is the current directory. So you have to specify the path using this relative syntax, then slash, then vbox, Linux, addition, additions, plural, dot run. You can't just type vbox, Linux, additions, dot run. Hit return. It's going to ask for the password. And now it's going to install the guest additions. And so now it's finished. Again, I'm going to do a shutdown just so that I can save a snapshot of this. You don't have to save all these snapshots, but I just thought I'd show it because it makes it convenient if you want to go back to any of these stages. And let's go ahead and start again. And now we should see an immediate change in that one of the things that it does is it'll resize our desktop area to fit the size of our window once guest additions loads. And there you see it took up the whole screen now and stayed on the right monitor. One thing we can do here, you know, because we had this window open, we just do that. Um, you can also come over to CD devices and you can see remove the disk from the drive or sun mount because you'll no longer be using that. And let me just resize so you can see it happen now. As I drag the window, you can see the desktop redraws and fits whatever size I make the window now. And another thing you get here is sharing folders, and that's what we're going to discuss next. It's often convenient to be able to get to the folders uh, that are on your host system. So one way to do that is to come under Devices and go to Shared Folder Settings. And you can also get to this from the VirtualBox Manager. And you just click on the plus symbol here. And let's go ahead and click Other, and we'll go navigate to uh, another drive. And I'm going to go to my E drive. And let's just use Dropbox. I mean, we could install Dropbox in our virtual machine, but that would copy all the files. This way, we'll just use the Dropbox from where it is. We'll leave it called Dropbox. And again, this is going to be a little misleading. We're going to say auto mount and make permanent. And it's not going to auto mount for us. We'll get to that. So then we'll click OK. Let's see. Let's go to the file manager and see if it did. Let's see what I can find here. I'm going to go to root over here on the left. And I'm going to come into mount and I don't see anything. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not mount, it puts it in media. Okay, so there's SF Dropbox. But if we click on this, you get this error could not enter folder media SF Dropbox. And that's because it's really not mounted yet. So what I'm going to do is use this little terminal window again down here. And again, use the sudo command. And what I'm going to do is I believe what's wrong is it doesn't give permissions to my account um, for the auto mount. So if we do a sudo usermod dot ag and, and then now you put your username here, hit return, enter your password, and let's go back. Let's try it again. And then as with a lot of things, we'll just restart. And there we go. Just finished booting. Let me launch the file manager. And now let's go to root. Let's go to media. There's the Dropbox. And then we click and now we can see all the Dropbox files. And we can double click. Snatch it back. And we can tell at a minimum that we at least have read access. And that's all it takes to get uh, shared folders up and running. Like I said, I'm really a Windows guy. And so I'm kind of learning Linux as I go. It sort of feels like a hazing ritual sometimes. All the little secret things you have to know and do to get things to actually work. Once you know the tricks, it doesn't seem too hard. There are some other features that I think are worth exploring, but I haven't gotten them all working yet or tested them yet. And there's a drag and drop setting here that can be set to host to guest, guest to host, or bi-directional. And then there's also sharing the clipboard in a bi-directional or one way or the other. So I think both of those would also be very useful. And hopefully we'll get a chance to look at those in a future clip. Somebody better help me, baby. I can't help myself.